right here. Here we go. The server is looking healthy. Active players, 0 out of 10, and it is staying. It's not disappearing, so that tells me the server is up and running. Um, so now we are going to see if we can actually start our client. And let's hope that the if this works the first time, it'll be the best, smoothest server turn up I've had <clears throat> so far. I've never had... Uh, I've never had a server run really well the first time through. Usually one mod will conflict or something's wrong. We'll see. But uh, let's let's go for it. We're going to hit play. Um, by the way, this little Funcom launcher, after you've joined a server you like and you get off, go to bed or whatever and come back the next time, you can actually hit continue. It will load the mods ahead of time and take you right to that server. Um, I'm not going to do that, of course, because this is the first time we're going to the server. So we're just going to launch it. And you're probably going to see this all in fast forward while I sit here and wait for the game to launch. All right, here we are in the opening screen. We're going to go to play online. We are going to look for my server specifically. We're going to just type in, in my case, Gorgonites, in your case, uh, whatever your server is called. Hey, look at that. It popped up 39 ping, which is good for me and level 300 AOC EWA fast XP. So it just barely fits the title in there. Now, if you look over here on the right, everything is default 1.0. Most players don't want to join a level 300 server. If the experience multiplier is 1.0, it will take them weeks and weeks of work to get to level 300 at that rate. So we're going to make some changes when we get in. But for now, everything looks good. Let's see if the server runs. All right, so it said mod mismatch. Don't worry, this is totally normal. Sorry, I'm eating dinner. This is totally normal mod mismatch. It just means that um, I, I am running the game with zero mods, and obviously the server I'm trying to connect to has mods. So it's going to check my client, match it up with the server, and if my client has all these mods, it's going to restart the client with those mods running and then attempt to rejoin the server. If I'm missing any mods, it will queue them up, like uh, less building placement restrictions. Apparently, I didn't have that one, which is kind of strange. I could have swore I did. Um, but it's going to find all the mods that I don't have, and it's going to attempt to download them. It will do the same thing for any players trying to connect to your server. And it will tell them checking. So we're going to sit here and wait and see what, what it comes up with. All right. Looks like the only one I don't have downloaded is configurable elevators. Oh, wow. That was quick. So that's cool. Yep. That is a uh, that is a new mod I've never used before. And uh, it's basically going to download that mod real quick. It'll be included in my downloads here. And it's going to restart the client and attempt to rejoin with that new mod loaded in, as well as all the other mods. Uh, it's too bad that they don't have a message up at the top warning new players, hey, this may appear frozen, but it is actually loading. All right, here we go. Um, oh God, I'm gonna have to blur out the nudity, aren't I? All right, so I'm not going to show you guys how to do the race selection process and stuff. That's a different video and uh, not really necessary, I, I don't think. So we're just going to finalize the character. Uh, we'll give him the Mitra religion. And uh, ship manifest. Wait a minute. Is this Isle of Sipta? It shouldn't be Isle of Sipta. Well, here we are again on our well not again this is actually the first time for you uh but here we are on our server that we just created believe it or not it started up the first time uh also believe it or not i've been playing on it a little bit between uh, my earlier recording and this one as you can see i'm level 66. Um, we're going to go through the settings on the server and i'm just going to give you some basic information on uh, what you can change in your settings. You can decide if they're worth changing or if you want to keep them as default. That's totally up to you. 
Uh, first thing you'll notice is we are not starting in the desert. If you've played Conan Exiles before, normally you would be starting down here in a starter area of the desert. Uh, since I have the AOC mod enabled, the, it actually starts me in a brand new area that they created for the mod. This was a bit of a surprise. I thought I was uh, playing Sipta for a moment because I heard all the rain and saw the trees, but um, yeah, that's part of that mod. Anyway, okay, so let's go through the settings real quick and get that over with. Now, if I hit escape and I go to settings, I need to go over to server settings. I need to uh, ent I need to go to make me admin, and then I need to enter the password that I had set back on my G portal page. I've already done that, so I've already unlocked all this, but what you'll do is you'll type in your password and you hit OK. And then it's you're going to hit escape and then go back into your settings. It won't un unlock them in front of your face. You'll have to exit out and go back in. So here are the settings for my server. I've got the uh, my little message of the day. So this pops up as soon as a player joins the server. They have to click OK to get out of it. Um, some of these settings I already showed you on the G Portal page, so we're going to just go through them quick. PvP is disabled on mine. You can enable it on yours, of course. Um, ownership, all that stuff we did in the video, or in the section of the video prior to this. So we're going to just move ahead to progression. Um, XP rate modifier. Now I'm using a level 300 mod, so I've increased the XP rate by about 5. Some people set that as 10 if they're just focused on endgame. That's fine. Player XP time. This is just XP you receive for just standing around doing nothing. I don't change that. XP kill modifier. On my server, I like to encourage PvE combat, so the XP rate is 5. That's in addition to the already 5 modifier to all XP in general, so this is a pretty big bonus right here. Harvest modifiers 3, XP craft modifiers 3. Again, these are all my choices. You can set those however you want. Day and night cycle, I generally don't mess with because, uh, I don't know, I just think the cycle by default is pretty good. Um, we switch over to survival. Uh, stamina costs, I lowered a point two, sometimes point three, just because I don't want people running out of stamina every time they sprint. I want them to be able to sprint a significant distance before that happens. Active thirst multiplier and hunger, just fine. But the idle multipliers I set to minimum. I don't want players to be punished for going AFK as far as uh, survival goes. And then logged out characters, we went through all this in the other video, so we're going to skip that. Same with Thrall Corruption, is uh, doesn't need to be changed. So we switch over to Combat. Player Damage Multiplier, I set to 2. That's slightly easier. That just means um, everything I do is double damage. It can go up to 10 times damage. Everything else is virtually unchanged. Thrall Damage, I also set to double. And the main reason for that is because thralls are supposed to be an extension of you when they follow you around. Everything else is exactly the same, unchanged, um, nothing new there. So we're going to go down to harvesting. I set the item spoil rate scale to 30% of normal, meaning uh, a steak, for instance, takes uh, quite a bit longer before it actually goes rotten. The normal rate is pretty brutal in my opinion, and stuff goes bad pretty quick. Harvest Amount and Resource Respawn Speed. You gotta be careful with these ones because Harvest Amount can quickly fill up your inventory and overload you. So I set it to 1. If you are if you want your server to be a faster build type server, I would set that to 2 or 3, but 10 is uh, rarely recommended. Okay, so this stuff is unchanged. I'm gonna go down to Crafting. Crafting time, I set to about half, so it goes double speed. Um, I set Thrall crafting time to half as well, because Thralls can take half of a day to craft normally, so I made that a little bit more acceptable. Fuel burn time, I tripled. This is a little bit confusing, because setting these lower increases their speed, but setting this lower decreases it. It's weird. So, if you set your fuel burn time higher, it multiplies the amount of time it takes for one unit of fuel to burn. So roughly 300% time multiplier means that something that would take a minute to burn now would take three minutes to burn. Crafting cost, I don't change that personally, but that's totally up to you. This one, I, I wouldn't really change it. You're better off just changing the time. 
abandonment. I disabled building abandonment for now. However, uh, once there's players on the server, if they do decide to join my server, I'll probably eventually turn that on. But this is the first few days of the server, so I'm keeping that turned off for now until people get established. Chat unchanged. I already explained that in the other video. Regional access I also explained in the other video, but you can set it here if you prefer. And purge. Uh, I normally I enable purge for now it's disabled because my server's brand new but as players continue on and as we get a population I will of course enable it to make things more interesting but for now it's disabled mainly because I'm setting up areas of the map and I am also a player so my stuff will get purged while I'm building things uh, for the community I don't want that to happen all right pet and hunger I set the uh, crafting time to half meaning that my pets will uh, Actually, you know what? I think I screwed that up. It should be, I believe it should be three. You might want to double check that, but I believe this uh, multiplies the speed of crafting. So the higher the number, the better in this case. Container range, I increased to two. Population limit, I set a specific population limit on the server as well as per player. This is just a 10 person server, so we don't want someone walking around with 100 pets by themselves. Okay, so that is Pet Hunger System. Last but not least is Maelstrom. Now, this is a Exiled Lands server, so uh, there's no need, of course, for me to do anything with the Maelstrom. It doesn't exist here on this on this uh, map. So I just disabled it. All this stuff is unnecessary. Um, if you are playing Alpha Sipta, you have to enable this and just mouse over each of these options, and they will tell you what they do. The generic settings for Maelstrom are pretty pretty uh, pretty fair. So I wouldn't do too much messing with those. Okay, so that is your server settings. Now there's only one other thing that you really need to worry about uh, in setting up your server before you start fine tuning it. And that is gonna be the um, EWA settings, the, the weight settings in particular. The default settings, your weight is gonna get overloaded almost instantaneously when you start picking things up. So what I do is I hit I for inventory. Then I go over here to EEWA, and then I go to Admin Settings, and there's a bunch of things that I can change here specific to Endgame Weapon Arsenal Settings. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and there's Custom Attribute Bonuses. So each level of strength, you get a 1.5% damage bonus, Accuracy 1.2, and so on as you go down this list. What I did is I changed the carry weight, which was 7, meaning every level of encumbrance uh, increases your weight by 7. I changed that to 21, so I essentially tripled it. Um, you can do it differently if you want. I just feel that the carry weight by default in the game is very, very low, so I set it much higher. I didn't change any of this other stuff, but there's all kinds of cool settings in EWA that you can change. Courage system is really neat. Um, there's a whole other video for EWA settings. I'm not going to waste too much time on that here. And then I'm just going to hit save. Uh, well, I'm not because I've already done it. And uh, what it's going to tell you is if you change any of these um, attribute bonuses right here, you'll have to restart the server before they take effect, unfortunately. So do this early on before you start bringing in players. And that is pretty much it for your setup. I've already gone to work on my server. I've put... A uh, helper over here named Heidi. She's got all kinds of cool things you can talk to her about. Um, and then the AOC mod has Grandmaster Ferongar Quanthus. And he will get you started with some starter quests. And then, of course, there's the Faction Hall. I've put these little signs around here because new people might not know what they're doing. And uh, just kind of there to help them a little bit. So that's another video, though, adminning and pippy. Uh, there's plenty of videos online for that. The next one I'm probably going to make is is about setting up your uh, setting up your quests, your individual quests that you are making on your server, and setting up a central market for the server. So until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't talk your ear off too much. I will see you next time.